back to Probability Beach. Glad you could join us. It was cold on the beach this week, so everyone was pretty bundled up. The good news is we saw the cold coming because the weather guy told us about it. The weather guy knew about it because of a little thing called probability theory. Now, if you don't know what that is, probability theory uses mathematical formulas to look at the mechanical processes that drive complex systems so that smart people can make educated predictions about the likelihood of potential events. We run into examples of probability theory every day, uh, weather predictions, the possibility of winning or losing at craps, anticipating patterns of terrorist attacks, and the odds of whether your girlfriend is doing it with her aerobics instructor. In 1812, in his Essai philosophique sur la probabilité, Pierre-Simon Laplace developed what's considered the classical definition of probability theory. Not because he was such a science buff, although he was, but more because he had a little gambling problem and needed to justify some massive losing streaks. Now, along with Laplace's definition, there are th generally three main categories of probability theory. Uh, they are frequentism, subjectivism, and propensity. Now, the problem with that generally accepted list is that it leaves off another category, one that's a bit more ephemeral and harder to p pin down. But it's really the oldest form of probability theory. One of our residents encountered it this week. Here's what happened. The lamp inverted, said the young woman. This is the unlit lamp. The illumination snuffed out or never lit at all. Is that bad? asked the old man. Is it bad not to see or speak? At times yes, at times no. That's me then. I'm the lamp. At this moment, not necessarily in your past or future. So, uh, I choose another card? Please. The young woman pushed the deck toward him. He'd needed advice, and he'd expected an ordinary tarot reading, but this deck was strange. He'd never seen symbols like these, and the cards themselves were stiff and slightly wrinkled, like badly tanned hide. The old man cut the deck and turned a card over. It was an eagle carrying a scorpion in its talons. A strange partnership, said the young woman. The killer of the air seeks a union with the killer of the land. Am I one of them? You tell me. So how's this hooked up with the unlit lamp thing? The lamp is your base, the place from which you move at this moment. The strange partnership is what you're moving through. So the next card is my future? It's the outcome, not necessarily the same thing. The old man grimaced. His stomach ached. Okay. Cut, she ordered. It bothered the old man to be ordered around by a beautiful young woman, but he did what he was told. When he turned over the card, he flinched. It must have been a trick of the light, he thought. It looked as if flames were flickering from the card's face. The young woman raised her eyebrows a fraction of an inch. The burning bride. Interesting. Whatever was coming to pass has already occurred. The old man smoked silently for a moment, taking in the lay of the cards. His stomach gurgled. They'd taken off a diamond merchant easily enough, but then Johnny Lee had gone all squirrely back at the warehouse. The old man had never heard gunshots in an enclosed space like that before. His ears were still ringing, and he kept thinking he heard sirens heading straight for him. This doesn't tell me shit, he said. The unlit lamp chose bad company, and bad shit happened. I know all that. What I need to know is what happens next. The cards can only tell so much, she said, and you chose this simple reading because you were in a hurry. I know, I know, said the old man. He looked at his hand. There was fresh blood there. A fourth card may be drawn, she said, for a small additional donation. The old man was annoyed, but relieved. At least a shakedown was something he understood. He reached into his pocket pulled out a twenty, and dropped it on the table. "'That'll do nicely,' said the young woman, smiling at him. She pushed the deck forward. "'Cut, please.' The old man did and turned up a card. It was plain white, with a symbol in the middle, an Ouroboros enclosing a black sun. The young woman took a sip of her tea. She touched the cards. The old man noticed that she would not look at him. The bullet hole in his belly felt like it was on fire. So what's the story, girlie? Am I fucked? If you don't mind me saying so, you were, excuse me, 
fucked when you decided to do whatever it is you've done. I don't mean to be unkind, but these are the cards of a fool, or a man who's chosen to act foolishly against his own nature. The old man laughed, then winced. So what do I do now? If you wanted to be a nice person, you'd leave my shop and go and die outside. The old man stood up shakily. He pulled everything from his pockets and dropped a wad of cash and loose diamonds on the table. He took off his father's ring and placed it on top of the bloody pile. Merry Christmas. Don't say I never gave you nothing. As he turned to go, the young woman told him to wait. She came to him with an old tarnished coin in her hand. Open your mouth, she said, and placed the coin on his tongue. It tasted like brass and a thousand dead years. His head spun. In this world and the next, we always have to pay the toll, she said. The old man walked out of the shop. The last thing he heard was the tinkling of the bell as the door closed behind him. Then there was a sensation of falling, and when he could focus again he was somewhere very different, very strange. In the transition to this new place, the taste of brass was strangely comforting. Well, that's it for Probability Beach this week. I want to thank you for stopping by and hope you can join us next time. As always, you can find us on YouTube and Google Video, also on our official blog on Blogspot. That's probabilitybeach, all one word, dot blogspot dot com. Until then, I'm Richard Cadry, and I hope to see you around Probability Beach. Bye.